In the 1970s, this company was the leader in the photographic industry, with a 90% market share in the sale of photographic film and an 85% market share in the sale of cameras. Three decades later, it was forced into bankruptcy. A series of poor decisions, lack of vision, and resistance to change caused it to lose the huge market it had built. So how in the world did this happen? Welcome back to Corporate Catalyst, where we take a look at the stories behind the world's most captivating businesses, brands, and icons. Join us as we look to discover just what exactly happened to Kodak. Kodak was founded by George Eastman, who was born on July 12, 1854, in the village of Waterville, New York. George was born into a wealthy family with several children. When his father, George Eastman Sr., died, the family had to move to the city of Rochester to make ends meet, as the financial prosperity they had enjoyed was quickly disappearing. Faced with this difficult situation, young George, only 14 years old, left school to work as a messenger for an insurance company, as his mother and sisters depended on him. Despite the workload, he began studying accounting at night school, a decision that helped him because, at the age of 20, he was able to secure a job at the Rochester Savings Bank with a generous salary of about $800 at the time. This allowed him to significantly improve his economic position and save to cultivate one of his interests, photography. At the age of 24, he bought his first camera, a small luxury at the time, to record his family experiences and to learn more about the mechanics of these devices. However, he was unable to take even a single photo with his awkward acquisition, which motivated him to pay a photographer for private lessons. Thus, he began to immerse himself in the world of photography, a passion that led him to experiment late into the night with various instruments. After some research, he discovered a technique called gelatin emulsion, which was a process that was created by Richard Maddox and improved upon by Charles Bennett. This process involves suspending silver salts on gelatin on a glass or polyester plate to create a film that easily captured light and, once developed, produced a photograph. Armed with this information, he spent whole days in his kitchen, which he had turned into a laboratory, making his own plates. When he developed plates that were stable and easy to use, he left his promising future at the bank and secured financial backing from a businessman named Henry Strong. He then founded the Eastman Dry Plate Company, a company dedicated to manufacturing and marketing photographic plates. His company's products were only moderately successful because not all cameras on the market could take advantage of the plates he produced. In response to this situation, in 1888, he ventured to found the Eastman Kodak Company, dedicated to the manufacture of photographic equipment. On September 4th of that year, he registered the patent for his most revolutionary invention, a camera that worked with a roll of photographic film, which he named the Kodak Camera. At the end of the 19th century, photography was a complicated and expensive endeavor. Many cameras had very short lifespans, only being able to take about 20 or 30 pictures before being discarded, so the occasions for taking pictures had to be chosen very carefully. In addition to the cumbersome nature of the camera, Photographic plates were also bulky and very difficult to use, which meant that only the most skilled practitioners took up the discipline. With the introduction of new film rolls and the Kodak camera, Eastman was able to capture the interest of hundreds of thousands of people and take the final step in bringing photography to the masses. Months later, Kodak introduced the Kodak 100 Vista camera, a more advanced iteration of their first invention. It was a leather box with a lens, loaded with a roll of film that could take 100 photographs. The product was revolutionary for three reasons. It was easy to use, so the company advertised it with the slogan, you press the button, we do the rest. It was easy to transport, unlike most cameras on the market, which were usually heavy and had many components, and it came pre-loaded and ready to take 100 photographs, which then had to be developed at a Kodak store where the camera was also loaded with a new roll. This was how the company began to position itself by democratizing photography. From then on, the company used the bait and hook strategy, a model that involves selling relatively inexpensive products that require the customer to purchase other parts and supplies on a recurring basis. In Kodak's case, 
This element was the development process and the sale of film rolls. With this strategy, the company grew exponentially and gained significant market share. In 1899, a new roll of film appeared, replacing paper with celluloid. A year later, this invention was paired with the company's next star product, the Kodak Brownie, a box camera with a simple lens with two surfaces, one concave and one convex, that took square instant pictures of two inches. Designed to sell the new rolls of film, the Brownie was launched at a price of $1, the equivalent of about $30 today. A ridiculously low price considering that the business model was based on selling and developing the film rolls. By the early 20th century, George had not only revolutionized the photography industry, but also had a significant impact on the livestock and silver mining markets worldwide. Developing his photographic film required gelatin, which was derived from animal bones, primarily cattle. Buying these bones wasn't enough because his suppliers couldn't keep up with the quantity and quality he needed. When animals were fed certain grains, such as mustard, the composition of their bones changed. This forced Eastman to create a subsidiary dedicated to raising cattle to ensure a steady supply of bones. Similarly, Kodak established Kodak Silver operations to purchase large quantities of silver and produce the silver nitrate used in its photographic rolls. In 1923, Kodak introduced a 16mm film camera called the Scene Kodak. In 1932, they released another version of the device, this time in 8mm. By this time, George Eastman was a major figure with an excellent economic position, but unfortunately he decided to end his life on March 14, 1932, at the age of 77, due to a degenerative spinal disease that prevented him from walking and caused severe pain. In addition, his mental health had deteriorated significantly. After its founder's death, Kodak continued to develop its visionary character. Knowing that reality wasn't black and white, the company set out to create its next revolutionary invention, Kodachrome, the first roll of color film in history, first in 16 millimeters and later in 8 millimeters and 35 millimeters. The product was a runaway success, creating a sensation in the marketplace and positioning the company as the king of photographic film rolls from 1935 until the turn of the 21st century. By 1975, Kodak was one of the companies with the highest number of patents filed in the world thanks to the creation of development centers that unleashed scientists and technicians focused on achieving superior advances over the competition. As a result of this innovation-stimulating practice, an engineer at the company named Steve Sasson created a device capable of capturing an image with a 0.1 megapixel sensor, storing it on tape, and later reproducing the result on a television, essentially the first digital camera in history. However, when Steve presented his invention to the company's executives, they didn't give it much weight and simply said, it's good, but don't tell anyone. It's no secret that Kodak was the king of analog cameras, and developing film and selling rolls of film made up most of the company's revenue. As a result, executives felt that developing a digital camera model that eliminated both elements would jeopardize the profitability of their business model, and they missed an opportunity to lead a new revolution in the photographic industry. In the second half of the 20th century, Kodak had a 90% share of the photographic film market and an 85% share of the camera market. But one event changed things drastically. A new commercial competitor arrived on American shores, Fujifilm. The Japanese company entered the U.S. market through Fuji Photofilm USA. And despite Kodak's confidence that American citizens would remain loyal to its products, Fujifilm offered much lower prices, better processing options, and its flagship product, Velvia, which had a higher resolution color film than Kodak's, with greater brightness, more vibrant colors, and better grain that was also much easier to develop. At the same time, the U.S. Department of Justice, in an antitrust ruling, required Kodak to allow other companies to develop its film, since until then all of its customers had to go exclusively to Kodak stores. This ruling severely hampered its bait-and-hook strategy. In 1984, the American company missed the chance to become the official film of the Los Angeles Olympics, ceding the spot to Fujifilm. 
Thanks to this sponsorship, the Japanese company was able to significantly strengthen its market position. Years later, in a somewhat desperate move, Kodak filed a complaint with the U.S. Department of Commerce, arguing that its poor market performance was due to unfair practices by Fujifilm. The complaint was reviewed by the World Trade Organization, but was rejected. Faced with this negative response, Kodak had no choice but to accept that it had been slow to react to the changing times and had significantly underestimated its rival. In addition, after another tough battle with Polaroid over the instant photography patent, which it lost, Kodak had to leave the instant camera market in 1986 and pay a hefty fine for illegally using the patent. Nevertheless, Kodak did not give up and began to prepare for the challenges of the digital age, albeit with little enthusiasm, as it meant redefining its business model. In 1994, it produced quick-take digital cameras, marketed under the Apple brand, and in 1996 it introduced the new DC-20 and DC-25. These efforts were not enough, however, and the competition began to attack from all sides. Fujifilm's photographic film offerings grew in quality and popularity, photo processing services declined drastically, and other photographic equipment companies that better understood the new formats, such as Sony, quickly displaced Kodak. All of these blows forced the company to lay off some 20,000 workers by 1999. Daniel Karp, the new CEO brought in to try to save Kodak, introduced the EasyShare line of digital cameras and also spent a fortune studying customer behavior. He discovered that women, in particular, were frustrated with the process of transferring photos from their cameras to their computers. This dissatisfaction turned into an opportunity as the company launched a series of tools that made photo transfer easier, including a printer that allowed consumers to connect their cameras to a compact device, push a button, and print their own photos. As a result, by 2005, Kodak was the number one digital camera company in the United States, a paradox given its initial reluctance to enter the digital arena. The success was short-lived, however, as the company misjudged the speed at which the new technologies would grow in importance. In 2007, it ranked fourth with a market share of 9.6%, down from 27%. A year later, it was ranked seventh, behind Canon, Nikon, and Sony, among others, with 7%. Moreover, as its market share declined, Asian competitors were able to achieve extremely low prices thanks to their ability to manufacture products much more cheaply. But the event that ultimately marked the end of Kodak's era was the steep decline in the photo printing market due to the emergence of mobile phones, tablets, and social networks, which replaced traditional albums for storing memorable moments and relegated cameras mainly to professionals and enthusiasts. Kodak still made headlines despite all the setbacks. On January 22, 2012, it declared bankruptcy due to its poor situation and insolvency. Its hundreds of patents were sold to a consortium organized by Google, Facebook, and Microsoft. After emerging from bankruptcy, the company focused on diversifying its products and since then has dedicated itself to manufacturing and selling digital prints, printers, scanners, clothing, accessories, projectors, televisions, security cameras, smartphone accessories, and new cameras. In January 2015, it announced the sale of its first smartphone, an Android device with a 13-megapixel camera with LED flash and a set of tools that allow detailed editing or retouching of captured images. Finally, to complete its diversification, on July 28, 2020, it began manufacturing pharmaceutical products and components with the help of a $765 million loan granted by the Defense Production Act. This was to rebuild the national stockpile depleted during the pandemic. Today, film remains a major component of Kodak's business. The company continues to supply film to the motion picture industry after signing new agreements in 2015 and 2020 with major studios, including Disney, NBC Universal, Paramount, Sony, and Warner Brothers. In 2022, Kodak announced it would hire new film technicians after film photography experienced a revival among hobbyists. This concludes the story of Kodak, 
a company that forever changed the world of photography by making it accessible to the masses and remained the greatest source of innovation in the industry for decades, but which eventually succumbed to new technologies due to a series of bad decisions, lack of vision, and resistance to change. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and click the thumbnail on your screen for another captivating tale. We'll see you there.